and this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred. Really glad you could join me today out here in the garden. I'm out here at my outdoor garden structure slash workstation. It's a beautiful day here in spring. The Lord has provided. It's around 53 degrees. You know, spring is just a wonderful time to be out in the garden. The buds are starting to develop on the trees and the leaves are coming out and the grass is turning green and so it's a great time to be out in the garden it's very peaceful and relaxing well today i want to discuss with you something exciting and that is five steps to successfully growing vegetables on your patio or deck so thanks for joining me today out here in the vegetable garden I'm enjoying my wild berry hibiscus tea out here. Warms your stomach right up. You know, whether you live in a densely populated city like New York or Philadelphia, you know, most of those areas have a postage stamp size lot, if that, you know. But, you know, the, the, the good news is that if you have a patio or a balcony or a deck, you can do some container gardening in those areas and it works out really well. So what are some of the advantages of growing your vegetables on a patio or deck? Well first of all you don't have to deal with snails or slugs because you know your deck is usually elevated and then uh, you don't have to worry as much about squirrels. You know here in my garden beds I have to worry about deer and uh, that's sometimes a problem. You know, groundhogs can be a problem. So, you know, growing on a, some, a patio or deck close to your house is going to eliminate those particular problems. Another advantage is, you know, growing your food in containers is most of your potting soils are weed free. So you don't have to be constantly going out and weeding your garden. Also, it's easy access to harvesting everything you know and so that's you know you can go out and clip a few herbs or pick some tomatoes or cucumbers or peppers and it's just really nice having to just walk out your back door and of course you know it's fresh organic food that you're getting from your patio also when you go to water your containers it's just a lot easier to grab a hose and quickly water them or you can also put your containers on a mechanical timer where it's an automatic watering system. So what are the five steps to successfully growing vegetables on your patio or deck? Well number one would be proper sunlight. That's very very important. You know if your plants are growing in an environment where they, they don't belong they're going to be stunted. You know they're just not going to develop the way they should and so you want to go out on your patio or deck or balcony and just take a look at the sunlight, you know, maybe write it down how long the sun shines in certain areas. Okay, and so, you know, see where the sun comes up, whether it's in the east or west, whether it's you get mid, mid sun, midday sun or all day sun, you know, just take a look at that and write down how long how much shade you get in your certain areas of your deck or patio, but that's going to determine what plants you're able to grow in your containers. And you also want to remember that anything with a, a, a root or a fruit, like a pepper, a tomato, a cucumber, your melons, they all need a good six to eight hours of sunlight. And I always say the more the better. For instance, and then your greens, you know, like your kale and your collards and your mustard greens, you know, they don't, and your lettuce, they just don't require as much 
sunlight, you can maybe get away with four to six hours of sunlight. And so, you know, you can uh, arrange your, your garden vegetables according to how much sunlight shines down on your deck or patio. Number two would be choosing the proper containers. Now I've grown a lot of vegetables in containers here, more just for an experiment, you know, and to see how they grow. And for the most part, they did pretty well. And you know, no, something else to remember is that most vegetables that grow, you plant in your garden beds, you can you can do it, uh, grow in containers. And so that's a really key uh, point to remember. But anyhow, when you go to choose containers, for instance, from my experience, if you're gonna grow a pepper or tomato, you wanna to make it sure you at least use a five gallon container, a five gallon bucket. You know, you want the soil to be at least 12 inches deep or maybe even a little bit more. Uh, and, and you can also, you know, repurpose any type of container you have around the house. You know, you just wanna make sure you, there's proper drainage holes in the bottom. You may have to drill some 3 8 or half inch holes in the bottom for water to escape. But on my property here, I, you know, you can get larger Tupperware containers, uh, any good size containers. I've taken the 55 gallon drums and cut them down and made the containers out of them. You can, if you've ever seen those blue drums around, uh, in fact, I did a video on how you can build indestructible raised con planter beds or containers using those drums. And so that's a great video to watch to maybe give you some ideas on what type of containers are available. There's also containers that have water reservoirs in them. And so uh, that way you'll minimize some of your watering needs. One word of caution is to be using, if you use a terracotta pot or a clay pot, you know, they tend to cause your plants to dry out quicker. Another option to consider is your your table planters. You know, they're about three feet high and, you know, they're, they're going to save your, your back from bending over, you know, and so uh, you just want to make sure that they they're deep enough, you know, a good 11, 12 inches if you're going to be growing tomatoes or peppers, something similar to that. Now, lettuce, you know, and your leafy greens, they don't require as deep of a soil. So any type of planter, you could even build wood planters that are only six inches deep, you know, a couple feet wide and four to six feet long. You know, the options are unlimited really on what size, but leafy greens certainly don't require as much uh, deep of a soil to grow in. And if you have, for instance, a fence alongside your your patio or somewhere near your deck, you can also do some vertical planting where you can attach these planters to your to your fence. Also, you can get potting bags, you know, where you can grow your potatoes in or any type of vegetable. They work really well. Number three would be making sure you use proper potting soils in your containers. You know, you don't want to use the soil from your property. It's too dense, not enough nutrients in the soil. So I would encourage you to think about buying the proper potting soil. And some of those potting soils even come with three or four months worth of fertilizer in them. But, uh, you know, the potting soil is nice and loose. It's, it's not compact. It allows uh, plenty of aeration in those pots. Here in our plant smart living gardens, when I've done container gardening, I've used my composted leaf mulch in my containers, and that was certainly a very inexpensive way to fill my pots up, and, and they worked out really well. You could also make up your own potting soil mixture, and that works really well. Number four on the list would be weight restriction. You know, you just need to be mindful of your deck, especially your deck, your patios, of course, are right on solid ground, so they should be okay. But, you know, the weight limit of these containers or potting bags, if you're growing potatoes in these large growing bags or you have an abundance of planter tables or containers, they can be pretty heavy. So you just want to 
carefully inspect your, your uh, weight restriction, especially if you have a, a six or eight foot elevated deck. You know, you could be put a, a, an extra load on your deck and then if you get a large group of people, you certainly wouldn't want your deck to collapse. So you just want to be mindful of that. So number five would be watering your plants. You want to make sure you water your containers regularly. Be, being they're elevated above the ground, they're going to be have a tendency to want to dry out quicker. It's the same idea with the raised beds here in my garden. You know, because they're elevated above the ground, you know, they're going to dry out quicker. And that's another really advantage of having and growing your uh, vegetables in containers on your deck is that they're also they're elevated and you know with my raised beds here if I get a lot of heavy rains my plants aren't drowned out and so that's another advantage really of growing your vegetables on your back deck. I installed a four foot by eight foot raised garden bed at my daughter's house a couple years ago and in there I planted a couple uh, um, determinate tomatoes some mountain spring tomatoes, a couple pepper plants, a couple leafy greens, and some, some pesto for her, some basil, and uh, which she made pesto from. But anyhow, I, I was amazed, and she was amazed at how much produce she got from that small four foot by eight foot raised garden bed. And so you'll be amazed at the amount of vegetables you can grow on your patio or deck. But certainly container gardening is going to require more frequent watering. You just want to make sure that your, you know, your soil in their containers uh, stay moist. You know, again, depending on your environment. You could also use dollies underneath some of your plants. You know, you to move them around. Say you need to move them around to get a little bit more sunlight or a little more shade. You can use dollies and just move them around. That's another really advantage of having uh, containers on your your deck. And you could also, as I mentioned earlier, install an automatic watering system with a timer. And it's a drip system. And that frees you, frees you up from doing a, you know, watering your plants. And, you know, those things work out great. And, you know, that's the nice thing about gardening. You know, you may spend a little bit of money up front to whether you're building raised garden beds or container gardening or you're buying cattle panel trellises to do an arched trellis in your garden. You know, once you spend the initial money um, after that you're usually just buying some sm small items like seeds or a load of compost every once in a while and so once your major outlay of money is spent you know it's downhill or uphill from there you could say so what type of vegetables can you grow on your patio or deck well like I mentioned earlier just about anything you grow in your regular vegetable garden where you have these large lots but you could grow tomatoes and if you do grow tomatoes you want to make sure they're a bush type tomato or a patio tomato or a, or a determinate type tomato they only grow about 36 to 42 inches high now you could also plant I always talk about my sun gold cherry tomatoes and they are an, an indeterminate tomato that means that they're going to grow six to eight feet 12 feet, you know, depending on how much trellis you have, but I would really encourage you to think about growing sun gold cherry tomatoes even on your patio or deck if you just need to provide some type of trellis and for them to grow up, but they're just like jewels of gold there on the vine, they're just so sweet. And so tomatoes are great to grow. Again, I've had good success with growing peppers in, in containers. Again, leafy greens and lettuce is something easy to grow. One of my favorites in the garden is my butternut squash. You could grow butternut squash. You just need to, again, make that vine's going to spread out. If your deck's big enough, you could just let it grow over the railing, perhaps. Or, um, but you would have to be, your sp if your space is limited, probably vining uh, vegetables like that are probably not the way to go. Uh, but you can grow up vertically on your your deck your deck you know to, to save space and that's a, a great way to gain more growing space on your patio herbs are another great plant to grow in your containers you know you could plant your basil or your 
your mint, you know, mint's great to grow in containers because you can control the spread of the roots. And there's, you know, we grow thyme in our herb garden and chives are great because they'll come back year after year. I just love going out to our herb garden and take some, some scissors and just snipping off some of those chives. We use chives on our potatoes or in our soups. There's just a lot of good use for those chives. Well, I hope this list of steps to take to successfully grow vegetables on your patio deck was helpful to you. It's, you know, my hope is to have everyone find their inner farmer, you know, and my hope is to share the message that gardening can be simple. You know, again, even if you're just growing food on your patio or deck, you know, we get to be involved in the miracle of planting seeds in the soil or planting transplants, and that's something else that you can do for your container gardening is just go to your local nursery or supply house and just buy seedlings or transplants. You know, starts are already a couple inches tall and that would get you off to a great start with your vegetables. But it's just a real blessing to be able to be involved in this growing process of these of food. You know, seed, seeds are a living embryo. You know, they're in a dormant stage until you plant them in the soil where they receive moisture and then the warmth of the sun and uh, it's just great to be involved in that whole growing process. So anyhow I just want to thank you for joining me today out here in the vegetable garden. If you have any questions or comments about this video you can leave them in the comment section below. You can also visit us at plantsmartliving.com and there you can learn more about gardening and also how you can reclaim and restore your health by adopting a whole food, plant-based, vegan lifestyle. Well, anyhow, I hope you have a wonderful day today. So until next time, this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred.